What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hey, it's graduation time. There's a lot of people about to go out there and take some big time exams. I'm here to give you some tips to help you be successful on those exams. We're gonna talk about that in this video. Let's dive in. All right, so we're talking about exam tips. Of course, as always, before that, head over to respiratorycoach.com. Check out the Respiratory Coach Academy, where you can find the TMC and CSE boot camps, along with a bunch of little mini courses just to aid your educational journey and experience to make your life easier. If you would, I'd appreciate that. And let's talk about the exams. Now, when I talk about the exams, I'm talking about all and any exam, anywhere, anytime. Okay. Now, this could be tied back to the credentialing exams. If you have had a chance to look at the detailed content outline through the MBRC's webpage, it's there for public information so you know what's going to be on the exam. You will notice that over on the far right-hand side of that, of that document, it breaks down different types of questions. And these are different types of questions that educators use all the time in their classrooms to test your knowledge and your, your understanding of key and critical concepts. And so when we talk about this, you have to realize that not all questions are created equal. Sometimes you say, okay, well, you know, I, I want a good mix of different types of questions so that I can test varying levels of understanding. Okay, so when we do that, what we see here is that there are three primary levels of questions. One is a recall level question. Now, recall just means basically this is the most simplistic of the three. And it just simply means this. I'm going to ask you a question and you should have information memorized. You should just know this information. You're not going to have to think, you know, over overwhelmingly difficult uh, about this question. It's like if I told you you're driving a car and the light turns red, what should you do? The answer is to stop. You know that. It's just recall questions. E simple, simple recall questions over facts and, and, and data. That's it. Now, when we look at the second one here, we see it goes from recall to application. Now, this is where you would look to understand the information from the recall base level, but then apply that information to a question. So you have to, you have to know when you see that red light that you have to stop. But to do so, you have to apply pressure to the brake. So what should you do? Press on the brake. That would be an example of an application question as opposed to a recall. Now I'm going to give you some examples before we, before you, don't tune out on me because I'm going to give you three examples over suction catheters. That's going to show you how all three of these questions uh, can be asked, but it's all the same information. And then finally you have an analysis. Okay. An analysis of these three is the most complex of these three question types because you have to know the base information. You have to know how to apply it, but you also have to be able to take what information is given to you and use that information to make an analysis of what's going on and then to come up with an, a correct response or not. Okay. And so, um, that's the three major types of questions. Let me give you an example of each one. Now this first question is a, is a simple recall question. Okay. Something you just have to know. It goes like this. A suction catheter should not occlude more than what percentage of the inner diameter of the artificial airway? 90%, 25%, 5% or 50%. Now, this is something that when you were going through school, you likely learned this. It was on a slide somewhere. Suction catheters should not occlude more than 50% of the inner diameter of an artificial airway in your adult patient. Okay, so what we see here is that this is just something you just have to know. 50%, it's gotta be there. Okay, now, when we go up from that, we see an application question. Now this application question is uh, going to take us to the next level to where we have to use that information that we just demonstrated, but now we have to know how to apply that information. So now we know a patient with an 8.0 oral endotracheal tube requires suctioning. Which size suction catheter should be utilized? Now you see, you have to now choose of these options which one 
fits the rules and the guidelines and the best practices that we know to be true rooted in evidence, you have to now apply that recall question, that 50% that, that, that rule to this scenario, which requires you to know how to gather and how to, how to calculate what 50% of an inner diameter of an artificial airway is. And so what you have to do here is go, okay, well, I know it needs to be less than 50% not an option. So what we have to do is say, okay, I know that we have an 8.0 oral in the tracheal tube. To get less than 50%, I have to multiply that times three. That turns it into French and then divide that by two. And I know that I need a 12 French suction catheter. And that's the best answer for this scenario. See how you had to take basic information that you memorized but you had to apply it. So you see when you're studying, you say, what size suction catheter should you use? Well, there's more than one answer. There's one answer says from a recall standpoint, whatever catheter takes up less than 50% and takes up no more than 50% of the inner diameter of the, the, the artificial airway. But then the formula tells you, okay, but what if it was an 8.0? Then you know we're using a 12 French suction catheter for that patient because I can apply that 50% rule to the scenario. Now, the next one is the most in-depth. This is what we call analysis, okay? So when we look at analysis, and you can also kind of see how the questions get larger because there's more information that is given when you get more of a complex scenario. So in this situation, your patient is receiving mechanical ventilation via an 8.0 in the tracheal tube. While suctioning with a 16 French suction catheter, you observe PVCs on the EKG. What should you recommend? Now don't worry about the answers because we probably already know the answer, right? Let's just think about how you approach this question and see the different level of complexity that exists in this question. First of all, you have a patient who you are suctioning. That's gonna make the size of the endotracheal tube important. Why they tell me the size of the catheter? And then they told me we have PVCs. So you see, you have to analyze this question to go, oh, wait a second, this person is having PVCs because we're suctioning that endotracheal tube with too large of a suction catheter. That's the problem. My analysis is, is that the suction catheter is too large. What are we doing? We're occluding more than 50% of the inner diameter of the endotracheal tube. That's the problem. So what's the answer? Continue monitoring the patient. You see, if we weren't able to analyze this and recognize that PVCs are due to the problem, the tools we're using to suction our artificial airway, then we fail. And we go, well, I guess we'll continue to monitor. Well, that's not the right answer. Provide bag valve ventilation, not the right answer. The, why is it not the right answer? Because it doesn't fix the problem, okay? And so you've got PVCs and PVCs are common on our patients in the ICU. The question is, why did it happen? And the answer to that, too large of a catheter size, we know we needed to use a 12 French based off the previous question. If this was brand new and I stumbled across this one first, I would probably do the same thing. Wait a second, is that catheter too large? Eight times three equals 24 divided by two equals 12. Yes, we are including more than 50%. That's why the hazard or the complication is present. That's what we need to fix. Administer 2.5 milligrams of albuterol, not the right answer. And then the best answer here is D, utilize a 12 French suction catheter when suctioning this patient. You see how each of these questions grew in complexity to where you had your simple recall, you had your simple application, knowing the recall rules, you had to apply a formula. And then this one, you have to figure out what's causing the problem, connect the dots, between the artificial airway, the suction catheter that's being used, and the complications that have, have, have developed. Utilize the formula to acknowledge that that is too large, and the answer is D. Much more complex than what we started with, with the recall question. And that's what it comes down to when you are preparing for uh, exams. You have to, one, 
know your instructor, know your professor. Do they, uh, are they a recall heavy professor? Are they an analysis heavy, an application heavy? Uh, I would think that a lot of them, uh, a lot of uh, professors and, and educators attempt to create a balanced approach to your exams. Um, but they typically can lean one way or another. That's your job to figure out. As far as your credentialing exams go, they're going to, that detailed content outline tells you the number of each recall, application, analysis. Now, you still don't know what that question is. So, what I say, study. How many other questions could you come up with around that? Maybe not suction catheter, but maybe do it around. Um, Maybe do it around uh, flow during mechanical ventilation. What is the initial flow setting? And then you go from there. What would you set it on? And then you go from there, and then it's now you have a patient air trapping. Why? Because of an inadequate flow. So many different ways that you can take any subject, any concept, and turn it into a three tiered simple recall, application, in depth analysis style question that'll aid you on your exams as you get ready to and continue to prepare for them. I'm a respiratory coach. Stay right here on YouTube. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe, like, leave me a comment. I would greatly appreciate that. Tell me what you like about this type of content. Uh, did you appreciate it? You want me to get back to the basics of the educational classroom? Uh, respiratory coach on TikTok and Instagram, Joe Lewis on LinkedIn. Don't forget respiratorycoach.com, your place for the resources you need to be successful on your credentialing exams on the first attempt. Remember at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.